Physicists in Hiroshima have done an experiment which they say does away with the many worlds interpretation. Or as new scientists put it, the result could destroy the multiverse. That would indeed be very interesting because I thought it's impossible. I've had a look. If you don't have a website, do you even exist? How's anyone supposed to know about your idea, your business, your service, you, if you aren't putting it out there? I think you need a good website or a new one, and today's sponsor, Hostinger Horizons, can help you do this easily, quickly, and at an amazing quality. Hostinger hosts websites and web apps and lets you build yours with the most up-to-date AI tools available. Their service is called Hostinger Horizons, and all you have to do is describe the aim of your website or app in plain text, no code required, and then you get proposals that you can refine both the layout and the text content. That will be optimized for search engine discovery and you can also automatically integrate links to platforms like Stripe. It's really an all-in-one solution and don't worry that you'll be left alone with your problems. They have 24-7 customer support. You can get started with a seven-day free trial and if you use my code Zabina, you'll get 10% off your first month. That offer comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you've been thinking about setting up that website but just haven't come around to do it, today's the day. And now back to the science news. The many worlds interpretation in a nutshell says that the quantum wave function never collapses. Whenever measurement has several possible outcomes, the universe splits into several branches, each branch containing one outcome and its corresponding observers. The authors of the new paper say they have evidence against many worlds because they've proved for the first first time that a photon can go two paths at once in this universe. According to a new scientist, the fact that the team could perform this measurement challenges the many words interpretation of quantum mechanics, says Hoffman, one of the authors of the paper, because it removes the need for a superposition of different universes. In the paper, they go even further. They claim that our experiment demonstrates that the past of a quantum particle depends on the future measurements. Big if true. But what did they actually do? They used a Mach Zender interferometer, a device that splits an incoming photon into a superposition of two paths and then recombines the paths. The path length is chosen so that on one output port one gets constructive interference, so a signal, and on the other output port one gets destructive interference, so it remains dark. This is the case even for single photons. That one output port is dark can only work if the photon has something to interfere with. So the fact that an interferometer does its job with single photons already shows that the photon actually went both paths. What the authors of the new paper do is that on each path of the interferometer, they insert a plate which twists the polarization a tiny little bit. In one arm in one direction, in the other arm in the other direction. This is what they call a weak measurement, and it's small enough to leave the interference between the two arms intact. But now they can measure the polarization in addition to the output port, and that tells them a little bit about where the photon must have gun. What they see is that in the normally bright port, the polarizations can cancel out, and that can only be the case if the photon went both paths. They also see some photons in the dark port and say that this happens because there was a negative fraction of a photon on one arm. Negative photon not to be confused with a pessimistic photon, which just assumes no one will detect it anyway. I'd say that, well, for one thing, we already knew that the photon needs to go both paths for an interferometer to work. And also, if they get negative photon numbers, maybe something is a little off with their interpretation. Just maybe. Their claim about being able to change the past comes from only looking at one of the output ports. They say basically, look, 
If we only look at the photons that went into this one detector, then the photon went both paths. If we only look at those going into the other detector, then the photon must have done this thing with the negative photon number. So what we choose to measure affects what the photon did before we made the measurement. A more sensible interpretation would be that the one port collects photons that do one thing, the other port collects photons that do something else. If you want to argue that that your choice of measurement affects the past, you just need to put a detector on one path of the interferometer. Because now what happens is that either the particle goes there or it doesn't, in which case it goes the other path and then hits each detector with 50% probability. The thing is though that if this happens, the particle must have known to not go both paths before it reached the detector or before you even put the detector there. What about their remarks about the many worlds interpretation? I get the feeling they just misunderstand how the many worlds interpretation works. I've noticed this before with the story about how Google's quantum computer is supposedly evidence for parallel universes or such. The many worlds interpretation is about what happens at a measurement. The measurement is when universes split. A single particle in the many words interpretation can very well go two paths or three or 815. In this universe, if that leads to one measurement outcome, like it does in this case. Basically, this paper is an attempt to make a big deal out of an experiment that teaches us nothing new. The experiment itself is fine. The interpretation is 100% bullshit. If we could collapse quantum hype as easily as wave functions, we'd be halfway to a theory of everything. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.